At today's Roman Station Church, we find the garden where the first orange tree was ever planted in Italy. And we find the first crucifixion scene ever depicted in Christian art, dating to the 5th century. Come and explore Santa Sabina with me. On Ash Wednesday, we ascend the Aventine Hill. We leave the noise of the Lungo Tevere with all the cars and buses and motorini behind us and continue up this small road. The Basilica of Santa Sabina, surrounded by Roman pine trees, is traditionally believed to be near the house of the Roman matron Saint Sabina, a widow who was converted to the faith by her slave Serafia. Around the year 126, both Serafia and Sabina were condemned for being Christians and put to death. Passing St. Dominic, we enter the side entrance of Santa Sabina. This basilica is the oldest extant Roman basilica which has maintained the integrity of its colonnaded rectangular plan and architectural style. It was built near or even upon the site of the Temple of Juno, whence come the 24 Proconesian marble columns with perfectly matched Corinthian capitals and bases. Let's go to the portico. This portico forms one of the walls of the cloister, which we gazed into at the start of the video. It's in that very cloister where St. Dominic planted the first orange tree, the first one ever to be planted in Italy, after bringing a sapling from Spain. And in the most unlikely of places, we find the first ever crucifixion scene to be depicted in Christian art. In this upper left-hand corner of the door, which dates to the year 430 to 432. The minor basilica of Santa Sabina is built in the manner of an ancient Roman secular basilica, or covered forum. The characteristics are a long central nave with a lower aisle on each side. A long restoration from 1914 to 1919 brought the reconstruction of the 9th century screen and scola with the surviving fragments. Here the Dominicans gather for their prayer, for Mass and the Divine Office. Entrusted to the Dominicans by Pope Honorius III, Santa Sabina has seen the likes of many Dominicans. Their very founder, St. Dominic, St. Thomas Aquinas, Pius V, and countless other friars have passed through this sacred space. When we look around, we see the basilica as it was designed to look during the pontificate of Eugene II in the 9th century. His notable contributions to the church are the root screen in Scola Cantorum. And when we look up, we see the clerestory of the basilica, pierced by a row of large windows. The sun illuminates the basilica, shining through not these glass, but selenite windows. While the vast majority of the brilliant mosaic that once would have covered the interior has disappeared, the original 5th century dedication of the church remains in Latin above the doorway. We enter the side chapel with the Blessed Sacrament, and we see the triumph of St. Catherine of Siena, that Bride of Christ. A story of love is depicted in these images. All we have to do is look around and take the opportunity to live that as well. Spending time in Santa Sabina, one becomes particularly aware of the effects of light in an interior space like this. In centuries past, the glass tiles of mosaics would have created a shimmering effect. Walls would have appeared to be floating. Light experience in Santa Sabina as an architectural feature is understood as a symbol of divinity, a symbol for Christ. 
the opulent effect of the interior of the original Constantinian basilicas is brought out in a Spanish pilgrim's description of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. He wrote, The decorations are too marvelous for words. All you can see is gold, jewels, and silk. You simply cannot imagine the number and sheer weight of the candles, tapers, lamps, and everything else they use for the services. They are beyond description. So is the magnificent building itself. It was built by Constantine and was decorated with gold, mosaics, and precious marble, as much as his empire could provide. This basilica, not built by Constantine, but 80 years after his death, was built by the priest Peter the Illyrian during the pontificate of Pope St. Celestine I. Zealous for Roman Orthodoxy, Celestine I fought the errors of Pelagianism. He countered the folly of Nestorius and ensured the Novatians would have no stronghold in Rome, taking their very churches from them. In writing to priests in Gaul, Pope St. Celestine I said, We are deservedly to blame if we encourage error by silence. Therefore, rebuke these people, restrain their liberty of preaching. The station mass is typically celebrated by the Holy Father. He opens the Roman station church itinerary on Ash Wednesday and joins us again for the Holy Triduum. When visiting Santa Sabina, most everyone stops in the Giardino degli Aranci, or the Garden of the Oranges. Surrounded by these Roman pine trees with a view of St. Peter's Dome, a quintessential romantic Roman garden. If not lost among the trees in this garden of the oranges, one can take in the impressive panorama of Rome, where we encounter the Dome of St. Peter's, the rooftops and domes and spires underneath that Roman blue sky. Thank you for joining us for this tour of the Roman Station Church of Santa Sabina for Ash Wednesday, this first day of Lent. I hope to see you here every day at the channel as the days of Lent continue on. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our daily videos of this Roman tradition. See you tomorrow.